Welcome to Disciples Net Church. We are so glad you've joined us for worship. Feel free to join in with hymns, pray with us, and share in communion. Wherever and whenever you are joining us, God's Spirit and people from all over the world are here with you. So let's prepare our hearts for worship. Let us go to God in an attitude of prayer. Lord of all things, as the seasons change, we are reminded of your constant love through all the seasons of life. As we celebrate, O oh God, you are with us. As we grieve, you comfort us. As life goes along, you journey with us. Highs, lows, in between. You are there, loving, guiding, calling, supporting, encouraging. In it all, you are God. Help us to lift our eyes from our situation, to see the world around us. Open our hearts so that we might see your presence, your glory, your love in those around us and in the beauty of your creation. Encourage us to expand our horizons, to look at through to look at the world through the eyes of another and marvel at the diversity. Console us, Redeemer God. When we are dismayed by the news of the world, headlines of strife fan the flames of fear. News of tragedies triggers grief unresolved and unbidden. However, those headlines don't tell the whole story. They don't capture the humanity of the people involved. They don't tell of the countless joys, focusing instead on the multitude of sorrows. Though we may not know their names, though we may never hear their stories, we pray for the billions of people who call this planet their home. We pray that each person will sense your presence and marvel at the world around them. Draw close to others who love and care for them. Help me, help us all, to have clean hands and pure heart so that we might draw, so that we might draw closer to you and receive your many blessings. Teach us how to live in your ways. 
even as your Son taught us. We listen in hope to your word for us. And as we join in prayer, we pray the prayer your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. speak with bravest fire and have the gift to all inspire and have not love my words are vain as sounding brass and hopeless gain though I may give all I possess, and striving so my love profess, but not begin my love within, the prophet soon turns strangely thin. Come Spirit, come, our hearts control. Our spirits long to be made whole. Let inward love guide every deed. By this we worship and are free. Won't you join me in reading our scripture for today? I'll be reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. One thing I'll be doing is there are a lot of pronouns using the word he here, and I will substitute the name of the person to make it a little bit easier to understand. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, the scribe asked Jesus, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to Jesus, You are right, teacher. You have truly said, He is one, and besides Him there is no other. And to love Him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, this is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that He had answered wisely, Jesus said to the scribe, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. May God add his blessings to our hearing and our understanding of this word. Amen. My friend Toby and I entered seminary together about 45 years ago. And over the next 40 years, we became probably best friends. I think I counted him the best friend that I had. He died about five years ago. But there was a story about Toby that I want to share with you real quickly. When Toby's son was only six or seven years old and skied on skis that were about this long, we had gone on a ski trip with Toby and his wife and little boy. And the little boy did not have the skis on yet. Toby's wife was still carrying the skis in her hand. And I honestly do not remember what Toby did or what he said to his wife. But she got so angry that she screamed something nasty at him and threw the skis at him. And my comment to Toby at the time was, you had that coming, you stupid jerk. And he kind of laughed and maybe acknowledged that he did and tried to work it out with her another time. Like I say, I don't remember exactly what it was that he did. 
But one of the things about my friendship with Toby is that we bumped heads from time to time. We argued with each other from time to time. We got angry with each other from time to time. And my friends, if you had overheard some of those conversations, you would not have believed that it was two men of the cloth who were speaking to each other that day. I could not be that angry with Toby unless I cared about him a lot. Some people believe that the opposite of love is hate. The opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is simply not caring. You cannot generate genuine anger and genuine hate against someone you do not care about. That actually is not the main point of where I'm going today. I threw that in. That's extra. That's a free one for you. But one of the things that occurred to me was that I could say something like that to my friend Toby. I could call him a stupid jerk. And if I had someone else whom I knew in exactly the same situation, I could not use that language. That language assumes a certain privilege. And with Toby, I had that privilege. And with someone else, I would be assuming a privilege that I do not have. And what I thought was cute and sarcastic would in fact be genuinely hurtful and would cause someone great anger. Well, Toby and I, and I thank God for this every day. Well, that's a slight exaggeration. My spiritual discipline is not really that good. But I do thank God often that people like Toby and some other folks are in my life and that we have the kind of friendship that does not require us to pretend that we agree with each other when we do not. And that is a very special kind of friendship. Now I need to take a moment and say what I am not preaching on today. This passage of Scripture, every Christian everywhere has heard sermons on this passage of Scripture. Every minister you know, including this one, has half dozen sermons on the subject of Jesus speaking the greatest commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and your strength, and the second commandment being very much like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. That's what the passage is about, and every preacher has sermons on that, and I bet every person on Disciples Net today has heard sermons on that. So I'm just going to pass that today and move to something a little more subtle. I want to focus today on the relationship between Jesus and this scribe, how they related to each other. Now, Jesus had been arguing with a group of scribes, and this man comes up and overhears it. And then he enters the conversation. Not sure why he did. Did he want to participate in the game? Was he looking to embarrass Jesus like the other scribes were? Was he sincerely seeking insight from a respected teacher? We don't know. We don't know where he was when he started the conversation. But we know where it ended. Now, most of my career was interim ministry. And I served churches on a short-term basis when they were between pastors. Very often, I came to a church that had had an unpleasant parting from their previous pastor. And these folks did not agree with each other very well. Some people were so glad that that guy was gone, or that woman was gone. Other people believed that the former pastor whom they loved was not treated fairly. And so there were groups of people angry with each other. When I came into the church, there was conflict in the church. And my first thought was, why don't we start with simple manners? Most of us do not remember the old comedian Will Rogers, but we have heard stories about him. And he reportedly once said, I'm willing to shake hands with any man no matter how much I don't like him, 
matter how much no matter how much we disagree i will shake hands with anybody if for no better reason than to prove that i have better manners than he does shake hands prove that we have better manners well i tried to put that in a little more serious language and share it with folks in the church who disagree with each other here's the language that i use i know Please say this to one another, I would begin. Please say this to one another. I know that you sincerely believe in God, that you love Jesus and follow him as best you know how. I know that you genuinely care about this church and you love it and you want what is best for it. I know you have all of those things. And if you will grant me the same, you and I can work together, even if we are not best friends right now. That was part of the message that I tried to share when I found myself trying to be pastor to folks who were angry with each other. The great peace activist, Catholic Archbishop Dom Helder Camara from Brazil, used this language. If you disagree with me, you have something to give me. If you are sincere and seek the truth as best you may, honestly, with modest care, your thought is growth to mine, correction, and you deepen my vision. Notice how Jesus and the scribe, in this brief passage of Scripture, notice how they related to each other. This scribe was genuinely impressed as he overheard Jesus' answers to the other scribes. It was a typical rabbi and student dialogue. The, the scribe then seems to comprehend the argument Jesus was making. He repeats it, and then he actually expands it himself, showing real comprehension. And both clearly were pleased and surprised. They were pleased and surprised to find a brother of goodwill and genuine religious insight. They were pleased and surprised to discover that an avenue for real communication, an avenue for real understanding, an avenue for real relationship, maybe even love, that such an avenue appeared where no one expected it before. How quickly they set aside this contest atmosphere and said Christ said to the scribe you are not far from the kingdom of God the result goodwill the result relationship love respect all those things happened that day a compliment by Jesus to that scribe was very nearly a genuine promise and interestingly enough this reading concludes, and no one dared ask him any more questions. Respect, understanding, love between two people seem to somehow just close off all that pettiness in the rest of the group. Go and do likewise. Amen.
each other we will walk hand in hand we will walk with each other we will walk hand in hand and together we'll spread the news that god is in our land and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are christians by our love we will work with each other And we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love All praise to the Father from whom all things come And all praise to Christ Jesus, God's only Son And all praise to the Spirit who makes us one and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are christians by our love and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are christians by Miracles happen at the table. Week after week, here at Disciples Net, we call people to this table to worship. And it's not just a matter of simply taking the bread that you have at home and the, the cup and dipping it in it, even maybe symbolically just participating like this, because that only takes a second. There's a part of what we're doing here that requires participation on the part of you and me and everyone else that's part of this circle that's taking the communion here, whether it's here with Disciples Net or around the world. And part of this communion is seeing the other people who gather here. And that takes, yes, a little bit more imagination, I think, with Disciples Net, but I still think that we're called to do that. Now, I came from a family of four children, and when we came to the table, Often we had been arguing, which children will do. And I remember being so angry sometimes at my brother or sisters. Sometimes you can get more angry, I think, at your own family members than anyone else in the world and carry a grudge. But when we would come to the table, and we had to because we were hungry, besides we'd get in trouble if we didn't come when we were called, when we would come to the table, some miraculous things would happen. We would pass the food to each other, again, because we were required to do that. And we would start hearing that story of the sister or the brother and how school didn't go so well for them that day. And some things had just happened. And we began to understand then the cause of the argument that we had had. We began to see them through different eyes. And there would be miracles that would happen. And often, after we had been at that table together, we would go away best friends again. Christ calls us to this table with the miracle of Christ's love that is given for us to live within us. And calls us while we're here, as we take this bread and as we take this cup, to do our best to see the other people that are here not just see them through our eyes, but see them through Christ's eyes. And we may not be able to physically hear their stories around this table, but there will be those in your midst this week that you can hear their stories. Just as we come to share this bread, share this cup of Christ's sacrifice for us, that in love we too learn to be that love to the world. Let us pray. Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we thank you for this bread that represents your body that was broken for us. We ask that you bless it, O oh God. And we thank you, O oh God, for this cup, your shed blood that you did on Calvary for all of us so that we may love one another 
because of what you did 2,000 years ago. God, we ask that you continue to bless us and keep us. It's in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. For it was on the night that he was betrayed that the Lord Jesus took a loaf of bread while they were eating. And after he had blessed it, he broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after they had finished eating, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant and my blood shed for you. As often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you tell the Lord's story until he comes again. All is ready. Won't you come? Eat of the bread. Take of the cup. Remember. In the United States, this week is our national elections. Arguing with people whom we disagree with, treating people we disagree with, with respect and understanding and even love, is part of the way it's supposed to be. I invite us all, in addition to all of the ways of sharing love that we want to do all the time, to especially remember that today. Amen. Amen.